All right, everybody, this is Paul out of Beverly, Massachusetts, and we're going <clears> to <throat> take off again this morning to do a couple takeoffs and landings. We'll start with a short field takeoff like we did last time, we'll go around the pattern a few times and uh, see what other things we can uh, show today. Okay, here we go. Short field takeoff technique, two flaps, we're going to get on the runway, brakes held, rotate 52, accelerate to 63 in ground effect, and then climb out VY, flaps away once we have cleared obstacles with a positive rate of climb. Here we go. I'll make the call now to get ourselves cleared. Beverly Tower, Archer 32480, holding short runway 27 to remain in the pattern, please. Archer 32480, Beverly Tower. Winds are a variable at 3, runway 27 cleared for takeoff, enter right downwind to runway 16. Gotcha. Clear for takeoff 27, enter right downwind for 16, 32480. Unexpected opportunity, guys. So, here we go. And Beverly Tower, Dakota 80838, hold short of 16, ready for release. I'm going to line it up. I'm not going to waste too much time because he's got somebody waiting on 16. He's probably going to let me go first. Okay, lined up. Brakes held. Full power. Gauge is green. Release. Airspeed is alive. Go to 80838, double tower on departure, turn left, heading 090, maintain 2000. 35, 40 for 52, 50, 52, break ground, accelerate and ground effect, positive rate of climb, trim. Okay, obstacle cleared, positive rate of climb, flaps going away gradually. And now this is the exciting part that I wasn't planning on. I'm going to set the heading bug for runway heading 1-6. And I'm going to initiate an early left right turn until 1-6 comes down to 6 o'clock. When 1-6 is at 6 o'clock on the heading indicator, I'm on downwind without the confusion of saying, oh my god, which one out there is 1-6? Which way do I go? There we are. We're established on right downwind 1-6. Beverly Tower, Cherokee 32480, established on right downwind 16. Touch and go. Richard 32480, the winds are 010 at 3, runway 16 clear, touch and go, then left traffic to 16. Clear, touch and go 16, then left traffic to 16, 32480. All right, I've only made it to 900 feet out of 11, but I'm going to take this position, turn a little bit early, bring in one flap, bring in second flap and create normal as soon as possible. Here we are on base. Dakota 838, contact departure. Contact departure, Dakota 838, thanks. Nice. Our speed is good. Our position is excellent. We're a little on the high side. Reduce power a bit. Also, we're on the high side. Let's bring some extra drag. I'm bringing the third flap in just a hair early. Turning final. There's the Pappy on the left side of the runway showing four white. So we'll keep the low power setting until we start showing some reds. Looks good, looks normal. The aircraft waiting for takeoff on the right side. And like I was saying the other day, minimum input. You make it look easy, the plane's going to be happy. Zeroing the power. Flare. Hold off, hold off, don't land, don't land, keep working. Very dynamic. There's a touchdown. Flaps away. Stable. Full power. Rotation. Let's take off. So the winds are light and variable. The touchdown was a little rough, and I'm looking at the windsock, and we have a little bit of a tailwind right now. This time of the morning, it's going to be challenging for the controller to pick a runway that's going to be consistently good because um, the wind is, is moving around. It hasn't settled into its morning pattern just yet. Guarding the throttle quadrant with my right hand. Coming through 500 feet. Traffic not available. 600 for 800 for noise abatement. Now that first takeoff was a little non-standard and procedure um, 
necessitated me making an early turn because we were moving to a different runway. But uh, now it's procedurally safe to uh, adhere to the noise abatement more correctly and completely. Here we are. We're on crosswind. And we're turning downwind for runway 16 here at Beverly. Baron 23 Papa Victor Beverly Tower on departure, turn left, heading 090, maintain 2000. Here comes 1100. Runway 16, clear for takeoff. Left hand is 090, maintain All right, leveling off. Reducing power. Notice I'm not prescribing exact power settings. I'm using power settings that are appropriate to the conditions and the particulars of my pattern on any given time around. There are some guidelines which I might throw out later. Tower 32480, left down with 16, touch and go. Metro 480, Beverly Tower, runway 16, cleared touch and go. The winds are 020 at 5. After this touch and go, Make a 180 and plan runway 34. Nice. Clear touch and go 16. I'll plan the 180 for 34, 32480. Yeah, like I said, tailwind. So that's a nice opportunity. We'll, we'll demonstrate. Beverly Tower, helicopter Metro 1, about 6 southwest with Echo. I'd like to transition in via 128. Helicopter Metro 1, transition is approved as requested. The uh, Beverly Altimeter 3038. Metro 1, thank you. Turning base, bring in the second flap. Bear in three, Papa Victor, contact departure. Forward to departure, three, Papa. Slight manipulations with the yoke to fine tune my airspeed. I'm going to go to third flap now. And here we are on final for 1-6. So knowing more about where the wind is at than I did last time, it's going to make a little more sense of how that touchdown is going to work. Here we are. Established on final. Alignment with the yoke. Left hand if you're sitting in the left seat. Men meticulously relentlessly work in that zipper center line so we never leave the center. All right, zero the power. And I'm being even more patient with the flare and the float, knowing what I know now. Okay, keeping the nose up, stable, full power. Rotate. Accelerate to VY. And climb out. So the reversal of, of uh, from one runway to the reciprocal, we're going to use what's called a teardrop pattern. So I'm going to reset my heading bug for the new runway, runway 34. It's down at 6 o'clock now. When we get up to 800 feet, I'm going to make a 45 degree turn to the right. Traffic not available. Thank you, dear. And if you look at the DG, the heading indicator, look at there's a little arrow right there that's at the 45 degree. That's the heading, 21.5 or 215 degrees. There's 800 feet. Right turn now to 215 degrees. Position in two and a half miles. There's my in a pattern right altitude. Turn turning back inbound for runway 34. Metro 1 to look at. Oh, I just picked a bumper. Maintain visual. Metro 1. Metro 1. Thank you. And now here we go. Vector 32480, there's helicopter traffic off your right side. A mile and a half has you in sight. Nice, thank you. I'm making the reversal now for runway 34, touch and go. Vector 32480, the winds are 020 at 5. Runway 34, cleared touch and go. Then left traffic to runway 34. Clear touch and go 34, then left traffic 34, 32480. Nice. Okay, here comes the first flap. Power as appropriate. And I'm holding forward on the yoke to let the flap use the drag element to slow the plane down. Once it slows down, 
I'll need less trim than I would have if I tried to trim it earlier. Here we go. We're on final approach now. Again, resisting the flap's desire to make the plane climb. I'm going to make it slow down instead. Okay, final trim adjustments. Third flap. Let's make this one a soft field landing. So imagine we're coming Metro in one, now. We are all set. We'd like to head back to the west ramp, please. So Captain Metro One, uh, direct to the west ramp. Landing to the west ramp is at your own risk. The winds are zero two zero at five. Head back to the west ramp, Metro One. Thank you. Good morning. This is a good opportunity. I always, you know, it, it's good to have a windsock on the field, and it's good to be able to see it and know it's there. But the airplane is a windsock. It's a weather vane anyway. As I'm make, making sure that I stay on center line, the plane is pointing. It's pointing to the right. It's saying, dude, the wind is coming from over there. So I'm going to use rudder to align it when we get there. But in the meantime, the plane is a perfect weather vane. Okay, soft field landing. I'm not going quite to zero power yet. I'm letting it cushion the descent rate. The mains are going to touch in a second. There they are. And I'm keeping the nose up. I've zeroed the power now. And the nose hasn't even touched down yet. All right. We take it rid of the flaps, and that'll drop the nose. Stable. Soft field takeoff. Full power. Nose back. Nose back. Nose has released. Accelerating ground effect. And up we go. Traffic not available. Four fifty for eight hundred feet. And let's ra let's wrap this session up with a hundred and eighty degree power off precision approach. And once again, I can't think of a better way to start the day. There it is, 800 feet, left turn. Letting the plane do all the work. Crosswind, 1,000 for 1,100 feet, planning ahead, right? Turning downwind, 1,100 feet, pitch, forward. There's enough speed, power reduction. Tower 32480, left downwind 34 for a short approach, full stop. And trim. That's your 480, short approach approved, winds 020 at 3, runway 34, clear to land. Clear to land 34, 480. The real star here is the airplane. We're just here to help it shine. 180 degree precision short approach. It's what would you do if you lost your engine? And we'll keep if in the sentence for today. Okay, here we are. A beam I touch down position. I'm gently reducing power to zero. And I am pulling fairly aggressively to get to my best glide speed. There it is. I trimmed it so the plane is flying best glide. What I need to decide now is based on how much altitude that I need to lose, where do, how large do I need my flight path to be? If I have a ton of altitude to burn, I'm going to stay out here to the right. If I've burned my altitude and I need to get to that runway, I'm going to continue the turn inbound. And it's an art, it's an art and a science Because we need to be correct. We can't be short, that's for sure. And, but we can't be long either. Okay. We're getting tight. So I am turning straight to the numbers. But I am not pulling or pushing. Okay. Going directly over a school now. And here we are. We're coming. We're going to make it. I'm going straight to full flaps. 
Yeah, I'm going to have to use a bit of a slip to make it work. I'd rather not have to do that. I'd rather just simply be perfect, but there we are. And intended touchdown right here, about 500 feet down the runway. And there she is. We're on the ground. I got the nose up still to give me best braking. I put all the weight in the mains. Putting the flaps away. Turn right at Alpha, Texas, right? To the ramp. 480, thanks so much. There's a lot of discussion on whether or not you bring the flaps down while you're on the runway. There is a pro not a prohibition on it, but there are people who go okay, against that. Alpha Romeo. The winds are zero, three, zero at, uh, they go against that for the idea that you don't want to do anything unnecessary configuration change while you're on the runway. God forbid someone puts the gear up inadvertently. Uh, on a more practical sense, if you're really trying to do a short field landing, taking the flaps away reduces lift from the wings, putting more weight and authority in the mains, more, uh, more pressure on the rubber where the rubber meets the pavement is what I'm trying to say. Okay, safe taxi through here. I can't thank you guys enough for paying attention and tuning in. And please share aggressively, comment aggressively. I'd love to hear what you'd like to see maybe on the next video, because I plan on going through all of the maneuvers over time. So uh, thanks again. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.